Well, hello there, this is Cool Dude Clem, and a little while ago I got a message on YouTube asking me how to do how I do my animations. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Now it's not going to cover any of the flash based stuff. This is going to be how I do my real cartoons with a camera and things like that. Although I probably will do a tutorial on Flash later on, it's really not as hard as a lot of people think it is. But anyway, I'm digressing here, so let's just get straight into it and I'll show you how I do my cartoons. Now, firstly, it all starts in here, in my incredible mind, where I think of the ideas. And of course, the next step after that is to develop those ideas further on. So, this is one of the scripts. If you read this, I'm sure you might recognise this from somewhere. And of course, that's not all of it. There's more of it here. And more of it here. And um, the rest of it, goodness only knows where it's gone. And here is a genuine Clement Series Cartoons storyboard. You can see the graphics, I mean the pictures, very basic. But they're only going to be seen by me. So I don't really care to draw really good when I draw these. Just a basic drawing of what's actually going to be going on in each scene. Anyway, what you're looking at here is the reference drawings for my cartoons. Now these are what I use when I need to redraw any of the main characters. Um, probably should ignore that and um, that, that's got nothing to do with it. Just got a little bit of spare time on my hands. But as you can see there's two main sizes that I use. There's a large size which are these two drawings here and a smaller size which are those two drawings. And to make sure that the smaller drawings are not off model, what I've done is just drawn a main set of characters. As you can see, I've got Mr. Bob and Mrs. Right Hand here. Then I scan that into the computer and printed out a smaller copy. And then when I need to redraw the characters, I just trace over these and perfect render of the characters. And some jerks banging out there every time. And of course I draw the arms in later on, so I draw them separate from the body so I can move them. Right, so in this folder here is some of the actual drawings I'm going to use. Now, the paper hasn't, isn't dirty, it's just yellowed over time. But you can see for actual size comparison, with my hand, how big the actual drawings are. Now this is the um, basic size that most of them are. Let's just find some others to show you. There's some others. But if I need to draw it really big, there we go. There's one drawing on a full A4 sheet of paper. That's also going to have this house on it like that. But mostly, most of my cartoons, this is the size of the background that I use nearly all the time. Anyway, with that out, let's get on to the actual stuff that I use to do the animation. First of all, let's take a look at the software that I use. This is Adobe Premiere, which is my video editor, and this is what I use for most of the work. I know this is kind of old hat now, but you know what they say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is Modplug Tracker, which I use for most of my music. This is Audacity, which is used for the sound editing. Nice little freeware program, which seems to be included with just about everything audio related. And to do the stop motion filming, I use Animator DV Simple Plus. Again, this is freeware software, but you do need a key to use it. Because this used to be payware, but they've since then released this as freeware. And they provide the key at the site to download it. For editing the pictures, I use GIMP. Nice little picture editor, similar to Adobe Photoshop. And if there's any video conversion to be done, I just leave that to eWriteSoft Super. And finally, everybody knows this, Microsoft Paint. So, apart from Adobe Premiere, all the software that I use is completely free. This rather complicated looking cassette recorder is what all the voice recording is done on. 
and it's also being used to record this commentary right now as you can probably tell by the way the tape's going and the meters are moving whenever I speak and this is where the animation is done my animation station on the left side I think can you hear that terrible noise outside just take a listen Ugh, family guy. Anyway, like I was saying, on the left, this is the stage where the cartoons are filmed. Which are way better than every single episode of Family Guy put together. Here is the current scene being filmed. Just a car on a road. You can see that the background is pinned down so it doesn't move. And this is the camera that films it, which is a Microsoft LifeCam webcam. It doesn't have to be a Microsoft webcam, but um, that's the one I have. And the stage is lit with fluorescent lights, which are powered off CFL ballasts. And over here, you can see the picture on the computer monitor. Unfortunately, the camera does not like mains frequency lighting, but if I turn the main lights out, you can now see the picture is perfectly fine. Strange thing is, there is some kind of weird delay going on with this um, whole setup I've got. Now, watch what happens when I move the car. As you can see, there's about one or two seconds of delay there between when I move something and when it actually appears on the computer screen, which can be a little bit confusing at times. Anyway, it's pretty easy to use this software. Not any different to any other kind of animation, any other kind of stop motion thing. Just take a picture. Move the thing on a bit. Take another picture, and so on. So, end up with lots of pictures as you can see here, which ends up looking like this. And yes, the car is supposed to be doing that because it's supposed to be skidding, it's supposed to be skidding along the road. But what we've got here is all the pictures that I shot for one of the animations. Now if I click on this file here, this is the actual animation that I did from all those pictures. Everybody getting out and getting into the car. I think my head got into the shot, didn't it? There's mum reaching into the car, getting something. Not in those bits where mum's in the car, she's actually supposed to be getting into the other side, so what I'm going to do is flip the picture when she's on the screen. So it looks like she's getting into the other side of the car. Oh, and here comes me, getting out of the car, walking over to the front, and here I go, back into the car. If we look here, here are all the pictures. Every single one of them a Windows bitmap. And I won't bore you with the rest of that, but I will show you how I turned all of these pictures into an animation. Now firstly, I've set this up so each picture is only two frames in length and I'm animating at 24 frames per second so each picture will last for two frames giving me an animation time of 12 frames per second and I can change that if I need it. Now I'm going to take all of these pictures and import them into Adobe Premiere. Okay. So I'll just select all of these. This could take some time. Two hundred and two pictures, two hundred and two frames, or whatever you want to call it. Right, so I'm going to select all of those pictures and just simply drag them onto the timeline. And there we go, all two hundred and two frames now imported into Adobe Premiere and onto the timeline. And if we play that, or if I play that, 
There's the animation, and of course I can export that as an AVI file. And that's pretty much what I did. Okay, so that may all be pretty straightforward. But how do you make a character speak, you ask? Well, I shall show you. This is how I make the character speak. I take four pictures with the mouth in different positions. There's one picture with the mouth closed, one picture with the mouth open, and one picture with the mouth in that position, and one with the mouth like that. Then I simply put those into my video editor onto the timeline wherever they're needed, according to what the character is saying at that particular moment in time. So, let's see how that's done. Okay, so, here I have something in Adobe Premiere. And as you can see, I've put in a picture, and I've also put in a little bit of sound. And if I play this... Yeah, I'm Clement's dad, and I hate everybody and everything! Okay, so that's what he's going to say. But as you can see, the mouth is doing absolutely nothing at the moment. So, let's change all that. Okay, so what I've done now is, at every point where Dad is talking, I've put in a picture where the mouth is open. So if I play it now... Yeah, I'm Clement's Dad, and I hate everybody and everything! That's starting to look a bit more realistic, but it still needs a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is go along and find every position where the mouth is going to be closed, and then just simply delete those parts from the picture here. So now, we have this. Yeah, I'm Clement's dad, and I hate everybody and everything. Right, so I've put in a few more mouth positions now. I've put in this one, and I've put in this one. So now when I play it... Yeah, I'm Clement's dad, and I hate everybody and everything. That's looking a lot better now. Just need to put in one more O mouth. So I'm going to find out where I need to put that. And that's pretty easy to find out because with this program, when I go through the timeline, everybody and everything. I can actually hear the sound as I'm scrubbing through so I know exactly where to put the thing. Okay, well that's where I need to put the other, the next O, so just grab that out of the thing, put that there. So we finally get... Yeah, I'm Clement's dad, and I hate everybody and everything! And of course, there's nothing to say I don't use the dark wizardry of digital editing. What you can see here is a walk sequence. That's all these frames here. If I play that... You can see the characters walking against a green background. Now these weren't actually filmed against a green background, they were filmed against a white piece of paper, but then I just used GIMP to edit each frame, and removed all that white and replaced it with green so I can do chroma key. And then I turned all this into an AVI. Okay, so here's the AVI of the, two, of the three walking, which I've already put in here, and this is the background that I've used. And when we play that, you can see that they actually walk into the frame. And then the door falls down as soon as he tries to open it. And now I've done that, this little thing here called motion. And I can simply edit things and make them do whatever I want. So in fact, I can make completely crazy things happen. Let's have a look at how that looks now. So, that's basically how I do them. So, I hope that's enlightened you on how I do my cartoons, and it's kind of getting late now, so I'll see you next time. So, until next time, goodbye.